Hi everyone, the tool we choose to present today is a causal loop diagram. This diagram is a very useful tool for getting insight on how a system works and is valuable because they help us clarify our thinking and the way we perceive systems. So first, what does a causal loop diagram actually look like? Well, it can range from very simple, as can be seen on the left, to very complex, as can be seen on the right. The more variables the system has, the more complex it becomes. The question is then, what does a causal loop illustrate? Usually, causal relations are described in a linear way, as in A has an effect on B, and that's the end of the story. A causal loop illustrates that the story continues. This means that B will have an effect on A, which in turn has an effect on B again, creating a loop of cause and effect. So a causal loop shows a positive or a negative causal relation. On one hand, a loop can be reinforcing, meaning that two variables strengthen the effect of each other. In this case, X has a positive effect on Y, and Y in turn has a positive effect on X. This creates a reinforcing or growing effect. However, this doesn't have to be positive as a negative effect can reinforce another negative effect, creating a shrinking effect. On the other hand, a loop can be balancing, when two variables have the opposite effect on each other. In this case, X has a positive effect on Y, and Y has a negative effect on X, creating a zero-sum effect. One loop can contain multiple variables with different effects on each other and a system can contain multiple loops. To illustrate the use of a causal loop diagram, we will base our explanation on a research that was conducted in Jakarta, in which the relationship between economic growth and the transport system and their impact on the road was analyzed. On the left, a theoretical framework of the research can be seen. Firstly, the framework is translated into a set of variables used for the causal loop diagram as can be seen on the right. An increase in the GDP leads to an increase in the transportation demand, which leads to an increase in public transportation, vehicle activity, and so on until the loop closes by increasing in GDP. Additionally, an increase in the transportation demand also leads to an increase in private vehicles and increases vehicle activity, but at the same time declines public transportation. This decline in public transportation leads to a decrease in road density and in turn increases the number of private vehicles. This increase of private vehicles leads to less dense roads. However, the paradox of the carrying capacity of the roads in Jakarta is that the more roads are built, they eventually all become dense. Keep in mind that the diagram should be as simple as possible. Try and think of side effects or unexpected consequences. The more you practice, the more to make sense. Thank you and good luck with your CLDs.